So, hello, friends. I think uh, we just went through a fantastic talk by Siddharth on how India is going to be a billion dollar market. But I wanted to kind of follow up that with a little more detail on what is really happening and what are the key things which are changing in the market, uh, which is going to lead to this. Uh, as you all know, India actually is famously the graveyard for uh, Chinese, Korean, Japanese, and all these companies who came to India in the past eight to nine years and invested millions of dollars. And unfortunately, nothing much came out of it. And uh, I wanted to kind of touch base upon some of the key trends which are happening in India, which matters to all of you. And while you are going to be looking at strategies for India, taking your content in India, as well as uh, trying to grow your businesses, these are really, really important. So just one line, uh, as Rishi just mentioned, uh, India Games is now part of the Walt Disney Company. And uh, I head the Disney Interactive Group in India. So uh, you know, just a little bit of uh, uh, housekeeping there. These views are of my own and not of Disney or anybody else. So don't hold me on to this. So uh, coming back to what's really happening in India, uh, you know, uh, what I really call is uh, that India is really the, the new kid on the block when it comes to gaming. And it is the new kid on the block because it's really happening. Uh, we are suddenly seeing a whole lot of what I call, sorry? Maybe I'll just use this. We are seeing a whole lot of digital natives, that is uh, young people who are pretty much grown in an era where they are getting access to digital technologies, be it mobile phones, be it laptops, be it tablets. Uh, we have millions of people who are pretty much grown in that era. And these users, for them, digital is almost first nature. And when we are creating content, uh, it becomes very, very important to keep in mind that these are not the same Indians who were there 10, 15, 20 years back. So the age of our gamers is much, much lower. It's not the 49-year-old female which Zynga is targeting or uh, you know, the, the users in China who are sitting in cyber cafes. This is not that user group. The second and the most important thing, as you of course know that you know, gaming is bigger than Hollywood. We talk about this all the time. Similarly, what we are seeing is that uh, the Bollywood industry, which is the Indian movie industry, is fairly large. Uh, roughly about, uh, you know, if you count all things, between one to two billion dollars in revenue. But what we are foreseeing uh, very, very shortly is that gaming in India is al also going to be uh, exceeding the movie business. And already the writing is on the wall. I just wanted to give you one example of this, which is uh, last year's biggest movie, Ravan, which was uh, based on a superhero theme. Of course, there are various reports on whether the movie itself made money or no. But I can tell you that Ravan became one of the highest downloaded game in India. We have now done over seven or eight billion downloads of this game, and it continues to sell. And what this really gave us, uh, the insight here really was that consumers in India are, even though we have Spider-Man and Superman and Batmans of the world, what really is selling in the millions is a Ravan or the localized character. So there is a strong connection of what is happening with Bollywood or what's happening with uh, the local scene in India with what's, and finally what people are consuming. Let me give you another very big perspective. Uh, movies, in almost every country, Hollywood contributes majority of the revenue for the movies. I mean, if you go to Japan, the biggest, mo the most of the movie industry is the dubbed Hollywood movies. Same thing is with, you know, Korea and other markets. There are, the, the local market for the local language movies is much smaller. India is the only market where 95% of the revenue comes from local movies, and maybe 5% is international. Uh, similar cases with television, similar cases with our newspaper medium. So when it comes to gaming, the fact that a lot of us try to get uh, international games into India by just localizing it or changing a few characters does not really resent well with the content here. So it is very important to look at it from that perspective. And as I said, we are fairly confident that soon gaming is going to be bigger than Bollywood, as we call it. And of course, the, the next big thing is the number, as you, you must have just gone through the big presentation, that we are expecting it to be a billion dollar market. And uh, this billion dollars is not just a figure we have pulled out of a hat. 
this is a number which we are fairly confident of. And uh, NASCOM, which is uh, one of the biggest bodies in India for, uh, for entertainment and everything else, is working closely with developers, with governments, with all the bodies to really figure out what to do to prop this market and to grow it there. And I'll kind of quickly talk about uh, what I say four reasons why I believe uh, this is going to happen. Uh, because one of the key things is that in India, we've been talking about a billion dollar market for the last five years. And <laughs> it has not happened. Uh, so there have been certain fundamental shifts in the, in the market itself, which kind of uh, makes way for the big group, for the big leap. And that's why companies like Disney, and uh, hopefully we are looking at a lot of other Western companies and Eastern companies following it up, who are coming in into India, making huge investments, and finally looking at uh, some serious play in India. So I think uh, the, the, the time is absolutely correct to do that. So coming back to the first thing, and this is my favorite slide, which I call about, which I talk about uh, unlocking of broadband. I think, uh, you know, we are a market where everybody has Ferraris, but there are no roads to drive them. We all have, you know, phones, we have better phones, better devices, but the broadband infrastructure in India completely sucks and continues to suck. Uh, we have, uh, you know, the speeds, whether it is, uh, you know, the connection speeds or even the quality of service is very pathetic. And this was largely because the mobile operators were not really focused on data. Their bigger focus was to penetrate voice services into India. Uh, just imagine that in 2004, we had less than 10 million mobile users, 10 million. From 2004 to 2012, we have gone to 800 million mobile users. And it is expected in the next three years that this number is going to touch a billion users. So we have gone through a huge penetration of voice services. And the next growth is going to come from really data services. And that's when uh, we are looking at 3G rollouts, which has already happened. Uh, 4G is about to launch in India later this year, which is going to be a full LTE service. So with all of that, we finally believe that we will have uh, this locked uh, completely taken off and we could finally be walk, we could start walking and eventually running when it comes to broadband. Uh, the next big thing which changes is what I call the, the consumers. I think uh, we are really seeing the market expand. Previously, gaming was largely a, you know, a geeky habit. We, we had a, you know, a few 16-year-olds you know, with, uh, with families in Singapore and Dubai and America who used to get all these devices and play it at home. But now, gaming has really penetrated to a completely different level. To give you an example, our number one gamer, when we surveyed all our users, is actually a priest in a temple. That was our number one gamer. Our number two gamer uh, was a street food vendor. Our number three sets of gamers, which is an interesting thing, is uh, soldiers in the border areas. There's not too much action happening there with Pakistan, so they're all on their phones. And I just found out Dena has set up an office in Pakistan, so I think they'll have a lot of competition with us when they come here. Uh, so I think uh, the user is different. It is not the 16-year-old geek. It is not the guy with red hair and pink shoes. Uh, these users are the masses, the mass consumers of content. And to give you another little perspective, India is like three countries into one. India is like an Australia, a Mexico, and a sub-Saharan Africa. So if you have to combine this and make one country, that's India. So there is a 20 to 30 million users in India who can spend, you know, who can buy the most expensive iPads, who can, you know, get everything higher end, who will have the highest end smart TVs. So there is a market for that. Then there is the huge middle class, which we talk about, uh, who can, who are actually, as I said, getting feature phones, who are converting to smartphones. Android is penetrating well there. Nokia continues to dominate. And then there is the huge class, which is right at the, at the bottom, which we call the base of the pyramid, where these users are buying phones which are 20 and $30. Uh, and most of these low-end phones comes with dual SIMs and triple SIMs, in fact. So it's, it's a crazy market. And a lot of people mistake uh, India by visiting Mumbai and Delhi and staying in five-star hotels and thinking that is India. But that's really not India. Uh, India is really where the masses are, it is the smaller cities and towns, and that's where all our growth is coming in. So the market expansion is happening, and that is very important. 
And uh, finally, what we are really seeing is the trends of app stores. Uh, I mean, for a long time, and I think this was not a problem just unique to India, but a lot of markets in Southeast Asia, Indonesia, Philippines, Thailand, uh, the operators were uh, you know, pretty much creating an undue advantage for themselves and creating a marketplace which was not very well for developers to survive. Uh, whether it is revenue shares, whether it is uh, payment terms, uh, the whole thing was a mess. Uh, what has really happened is in the past few years, uh, largely driven by Nokia and Android and you know, other partners like the whole App Store module, we are now seeing millions of downloads being driven through that. Last month we announced uh, to be the first publisher in the world to, to clock 100 million downloads on the Nokia Store. And today we are clocking between 300 to 500,000 downloads a day on the Nokia store itself. I'm not talking about other stores. So what is suddenly happening is the democratization of content has happened and we are no longer dependent on uh, some MBA who's, you know, got hired by an operator who's deciding whether he's going to take your game or no. Uh, it is now pretty much easy. You can be sitting right here and uploading your content and uh, serving markets like India, which is becoming very important. And just to give you a comparison, previously if you had to launch your content in India, uh, there are about, uh, about 11 operators with offices in eight different cities and you had to do individual contracts with each one of them and then finally when you had to deploy your content, uh, there are about 22 provinces in India which is what we call circles or 22 or 23. So you pretty much had to deal with these 22 different provinces to launch your content. So you can imagine the complexity of getting to market in a segment like this and I think at one shot uh, this complexity is gone, which again creates a big opportunity. But at the same time, the competition has become 100x. So now, previously there were maybe 10, 20, 30 companies uh, with maybe a few hundred games there. But now, suddenly you have you know millions of games or hundreds and thousands of games there from all over the world competing in the market. And I think that changes the, the landscape completely. And yes, I think, uh, you know, the talk of freemium is really big and I think it is no different in India. Uh, free is really the new thing and uh, a lot of uh, our content is now given away for free. Monetization is happening through either advertising, uh, through, uh, through freemium models where we are charging people. It's a, it's a new beast for India because our payment systems are not completely there, but uh, clearly uh, this is a trend which we are seeing to continue and I think as more and more app stores become popular, this is really what is going to be the model. So, uh, you know, uh, the people who are really creating games for on a paper download model, uh, this is going to be a challenging market for you. So freemium is really there to go. And if you really look at some of the key trends which have emerged out of all of this, uh, you know, I think it's really exciting. I think it's, you know, I'm, I'm glad that we are having this conference at the right time because these trends are, a lot of them are global trends, but a lot of th uh, them are already happening or about to happen in India, which would help all of us uh, when you look at it from a market perspective. So <laughs> I think the biggest trend is the end of the mobile operator. I think uh, it started with the US. Uh, I think Apple led the way on, uh, you know, making the operator a dump pipe. Uh, and I think uh, a lot of that followed in many, many markets. And I think in India, uh, you know, even though we have 13 operators and a lot of the market cap of these operators is there, the problem is that uh, the content community was not treated with the same amount of respect which it deserved. But today, because of these policies and I think the government regulation coming in, I think the market is changing. And I would, I would you know, be uh, more than happy to report to you that operators have now come back changing revenue share. I think India is among the few markets where we were normally getting 70% to developers and 30% to developers and 70% to operators. And for the first time, uh, and I think this deserves a big round of applause that Vodafone has announced 70% to developers and 30% to them. So I think that kind of, that is really the, the first part of the domino which is kind of broken down. And I think this is going to get followed soon with, you know, every other operator to respond to this because uh, you know, clearly you cannot create a business by getting 30% revenue and getting paid after 300 days. So that was the challenge. So I think, uh, uh, you know, this is really happening. It's unlocking a whole lot of things here. And uh, I think the mobile payments is becoming a reality. I think we all talk about uh, 
the payment infrastructure in India being challenging. But what is happening is that uh, in India, a lot of times, we have the advantage of not adopting the latest technology. That when we really adopt, we adopt the absolutely latest technology. So, you know, people went from having no phones to 2G and 3G, and maybe some of them will start having their first handset as a 4G handset. Their first internet experience is going to be 4G. Similarly, uh, India has launched the UID initiative, which is called the unique identification number for each citizen. And this is going to in integrate with your banking, your payment solutions, and a whole lot of things. And uh, a lot of this is already in motion. And we are expecting in the next uh, uh, maybe, uh, uh, say, 24 to 48 months, a lot of this getting streamlined and uh, uh, getting integrated back into the payment systems. And I think this is going to create uh, a single biggest economy where money is getting transferred. I don't know if you know, India is already the biggest market where money is sent back because we have so many of our Indian brothers and sisters living in you know, all parts of the world, whether it is even you know, US, Middle East, Singapore. And a lot of this money is transferred via you know, bank services. And similarly, there are a lot of people who work in cities who have to send money back to their smaller villages and towns. And this is a complete issue. I think the government's key initiative is to transfer or to, to sort that part out. And while they're going to do that, they're also going to enable people to start making payments for other things and kind of get the cash economy, which is huge, to a much more uh, cleaner uh, white economy, as we call, where uh, we will be seeing a lot of these numbers churn. So it's a good time to invest in India if you are sitting here. And finally, as I said, tablets is another big thing which is getting picked up. A lot of us are not going to use the laptop and directly going to start using tablets. This is a reality. We are seeing that happen. Uh, you know, today you can, I think the cheapest tablet is less than about $100. Of course, the experience is crap. You can't compare it to an iPad. But I think uh, over a period of time, there are many manufacturers looking at the lower end markets. Uh, but with the new Tegra chipsets and all of that and what MediaTek is doing, we are going to get a good quality experience on the tablets itself. So I think. Uh, eventually, it is going to be a mobile tablet market, and PC might be, you know, a, a really, really small segment for all of us. So I think that's really why uh, Facebook, even though we talk about huge number of users, the challenge goes back to the whole monetization part and whether we are going to get the numbers there. So tablets is really what is going to be exciting. And uh, as I said, I think consumer insights become really important in this business, and we all know about data mining, and we're all talking about how to analyze our users. But I think in India, the com consumer analytics goes to a completely different level, because India is like, uh, is like different countries into one. How a region responds is completely different than how a different city responds. And a lot of us in India are looking at what I call self-service, uh, uh, the uh, uh, assisted model versus a self-service model. Let me give you an example. Uh, we run the most successful subscription game service in India called Games on Demand. And what we learned in that service early on was that we were giving people free trials, but they were not converting into paid subscribers. And when we started talking to them, we realized that they did not know how to play games. That was their problem. But they all wanted to play games. So we started a call center to teach people how to play games. So we had our people call them and say, you know what, we're going to teach you how to play Zuma or Plants vs. Zombies. And that is what completely propped this usage up. And today we have hundreds of people in call centers who actually are giving people lessons on how to game. And that's how they are adopting gaming. Now this is a completely different cultural insight compared to any other market where we are almost expecting people to know what to do already. And here we have to pretty much seed them. This is the same thing which happened in India when mobile phones were launched and you actually bought a mobile SIM card. Somebody used to come to your house to insert the SIM into the mobile phone and to show you how to send the first SMS or make the first call. That is how it happened. And now, of course, you can, you know, in, in Singapore, you can buy a SIM card off a dispensing machine and, you know, same is the case in India. Similarly, in, in India, it is very difficult to start expecting people to understand what is this MMORPGs and what is this uh, card-based trading games and all of that because they never grew up playing these things. So I think the way to really do this is to maybe start people, evangelize this, give them data on how to do this and they'll do this and they'll do it really well. So I think education becomes a big part of the uh, consumer experience for us. 
And of course, uh, uh, as I said, uh, sorry, um, how do I miss that? Yeah, that's my favorite slide. Uh, local IP focus. I can't, I can't tell you more why local IP focus is responsible is important. And I think uh, maybe this will give you an answer. Uh, there were two segments in India which succeeded without any government intervention. And it is called beauty and IT. So, and I think gaming is the third one which is going to be, so we are not expecting the government to give us any concessions. We are not asking them for anything. The only thing we are asking our government is to keep out of this. So uh, I think uh, that is very important. And unlike you know, China or Korea or Japan where government is proactively playing a role in you know, propping this industry up, we are not having any of that. So a lot of this is all driven by consumer demand, which is actually a good news. And that's what we are really focused on. And uh, you know, scaling becomes a big challenge in India because, uh, <laughs> and, and this is a real picture. This is how a lot of things get transported in India. So you know, it is very easy to get the first 50, first 100, first 200,000 users into the market. But the big challenge is, how do you get to the millions and the hundreds and millions of users? And I think that requires uh, you know, not just uh, as I said, it's not just about putting people there. It's about driving localized strategies. So our strategy for you know, a city in South is completely different than what we're doing in North India, what we're doing in you know, East India. And sometimes it's also completely changes with the kind of events we have. So you know, we have a festival happening every, every single day. So right from the festivals to cricket, which is actually a big thing in India, uh, you know, and we have I know, so many cricket games there and they still continue to sell. So I think it is very important to understand this. And uh, instead of trying to make one game into a very, very big game, it might be an interesting strategy to have a, a bouquet of games out there, see what works, and then kind of scale that uh, versus taking a one game approach. And I have one minute left, and that's why I come to the last slide, which talks about uh, the billion dollar opportunity we are looking at. Uh, this number hitting fairly quickly. We look at uh, about uh, $3 billion in total content play and about a billion in gaming. So I think we already had that in the previous session. So net-net, uh, we are looking at roughly, I think this is an important number, I'm looking at uh, 200 million gamers, sorry. I'm looking at about 200 million gamers to come into India by 2016. So that is the scale. And today this number, by the way, is roughly 40 to 50 million. So we are going to jump from 40 million to 200 million gamers. And I think that's really the big opportunity. And this is a train or the bus which all of us have to be into if we have to make a lot of money. Of course, advertising is going to be important. And there have been many sessions here. And I think uh, India is going to pretty much uh, you know, fall through that. And advertising becomes important and more so. And as I said, I think uh, you know, this is what it is. And it's the perfect time for me to welcome you to come to India. and spend your millions of dollars and make the billions in returns. Thank you. Maybe I have a few questions or time is up. Maybe a couple of questions, if at all. Thank you. I'm Dian from Indonesia. You're mentioning in the Nokia, your download uh, of 100 million, right? And can be offered. So first, um, what's the language? Is it in Indian or English? And then secondly, um, How's the market share? How many percent from the India or from the other part of the world? Thank you. So uh, right now, bulk of our content is in English. But that is for the first 40 million users. But as we go to 200 million users, I think the content will have to become a lot more localized. So we are going to be going forward, have localized content in regional languages. That's one. Secondly, out of the 100 million downloads on Nokia, I would say majority was from India majority. And uh, the top five countries, by the way, Indonesia did figure out in the top five. Uh, we had Brazil, Indonesia, uh, I think there was one other, I, I don't remember, but there was Brazil, Indonesia, and uh, India, of course, were in the top three. May I know the top device, Nokia device? Uh, it was the Series 40 devices. 40. Series 40, yeah. Thank you very much. Thanks. I think we have one more, yeah. Games like, for example, Raw One, 
uh, are these games uh, free to play, pay for content, or are they pay for the download? Um, how is like the hierarchy structure in the media? Is, is there any few users pay and pay a lot in the future? Will it be like a new where everyone pays and everyone pays a little bit? So actually, uh, as I told you, for Ravan, we had a strategy of three countries. So we had the Australia, Mexico, and the Sub-Saharan Africa strategy. So we had a premium game, which was on, on, I, uh, on iOS, Android, and the higher-end devices, which was sold on a paper download model, pretty much, which you could buy the game spending 50 rupees or whatever, $1. So there was that segment which we went after. Then we released a game which was with ads in it. So we got in uh, a major advertiser who did in-game advertising. So we had a game, and that was for the mid, so we had it on Facebook, we had it on the app stores, because we could not build the app stores. So for the app store, we had a completely different monetizing strategy where ads were placed in the game. And then we had the third strategy, which I briefly talked about, which is our television strategy. So in India, uh, digitization of TV is happening. People are getting set-top boxes where they can play games. So we also released the Ravan game on the DTH box, uh, which people could play on their remote controls, which was, again, completely free. And that user and the game experience is also much lower. But that is really the low-end user who does not even probably own a PC or a phone. For him, the experience of playing a game on the TV is the most supreme experience. So this game was marketed in these three different segments using the same IP. And the return which we made was far higher than we would have made targeting it on one particular segment. And that's a mistake which a lot of the people do, that they just come and target one segment of each of this. And it becomes really difficult for you to make money, while what you should be doing is targeting all three segments. Anyway, thanks a lot. I'm, I'm surely available for any comments later, and you have my contact.